Phil Ivey legally found a way to steal millions from the world's biggest casinos, doing what all gamblers aspire to do, beat the house. Phil Ivey is one of the greatest poker players in the world. 10 World Series of Poker bracelets, one World Poker Tour title, 38 million won from poker tournaments, and already in the Poker Hall of Fame. Many consider Phil to be the GOAT on the felt. Known for his serious demeanor and intense pursuit of winning, people have even called him the Jordan or the Kobe of poker. However, poker is a game of skill where you're trying to outthink your opponent on many levels with the metagame involved on the highest level with the best players in the world. But Phil found a way to take the house down, not in a game of skill like poker, in a game of luck, Baccarat. Baccarat is similar to blackjack with some slight variations. Instead of trying to get to 21, you're trying to get as close as possible to nine. But the cards hold different values than they do in blackjack, and there's some other differences from blackjack. However, it's a game that boils down to luck. The casino holds an edge. All these giant buildings weren't put up giving away money. But the edge is slight. Only about 1-2% to for the house, meaning it's essentially a coin flip, but over time, the house is going to get theirs. That is unless you find some sort of system to flip the edge over to your side. Or in Phil Ivey's case, you find a person that could flip the edge to your side. Chang Yin Sun, who goes by Kelly, or in the gambling world, she's known as the Baccarat Machine. Kelly started gambling at the young age of 15, using a fake ID to play the Chinese version of poker and even go on gambling cruises, playing every sort of game possible, just loving the thrill. The problem, if you love the thrill, you probably aren't gonna win too much. And that's what's happening to Kelly losing money and heading down the wrong path. That was until she happened to be playing slots on a machine next to Steven Black, a professional gambler who has a knack for fighting on edge. His impeccable sharp memory and vision led to him creating his own luck time and time again over, over various games. Steven took Kelly under his wing. She would receive about $20 an hour for helping Steven, not nearly as much as Steven was bringing in with her help, but she was learning how to beat the house, and that was a much more important thing for Kelly. Because Kelly and Steven were taking the casinos for big money and took out a loan for one of her friends, promised that the loan would be paid back for Kelly. Kelly left thinking nothing of it, and a few months later, it came back to bite her, facing legal troubles and even spending some time in jail. Her and Steven separated during this period, but Kelly discovered something new and was determined to work hard and become the best at it to get back at the casino. What she discovered was edge sorting. When the cards are cut, there are imperfections on the long side, making it possible to distinguish one side from another. These imperfections are so small and almost indistinguishable, but with lots of practice, it can be done. And for some, like Kelly, it could be mastered. She started using this method and taking money from casinos. However, her bankroll wasn't huge. Bump back into Steven. He wanted to take down the house for everything, and he needed his friend. Phil Ivey. He knew Phil Ivey's massive bankroll would help them bring in more money, but that wasn't the most important quality Phil brought to the team. As a high roller and a well-known one, Phil had certain privileges that are difficult to obtain for the average gambler. Casinos knew he had money and they were willing to accommodate Phil to try and take that money. That could mean comping him for hotel room, flights to the casinos, rides from the airport, free food, free drink, but that's not what the team needed. They needed some special circumstances to play the game and they were going to ask for them and they knew the casinos would agree because it was Phil Ivey. Requirements were as follows. The dealer must speak Kelly's native language. Well, there was two reasons for this. She wanted to communicate with the dealer in her native tongue, but it also made her seem superstitious making the next requirements not raise many red flags with the casino. The second requirement, the dealer needed to use an automatic shuffler so the cards would not rotate, making it possible to edge sort because the cards would stay the same way throughout the game. The third, the deck would not change at any point. This is simple. Kelly did not want to have to learn a completely new deck midway through sorting it. And the fourth, instead of Baccarat, they wanted to play mini Baccarat. The big difference between the two in many, the dealer is the only one to touch the card. Phil and Kelly thought casinos would be less likely to accuse them of cheating if they weren't touching any card. They hit the road and started executing their plan and things were going great. They played in Montreal, Singapore, Macau, Monte Carlo, and each time they were bringing home cash. Then they decided to hit the Borgata in Atlantic City and everything started to hit the fan. In four trips, they won 9.6 million 
and Phil reinvested those winnings to play some craps and brought the total to over 10 million just from that one casino. The Borgata was paying them each time and they started to feel invincible, but not invincible enough. They needed to mix things up. Crockford's in London. This time, it did not take more than one trip. In 24 hours, the pair was up $12 million. That's when the casino decided no more and switched out the debt. Well, Phil and Kelly looked at each other and they decided the same thing. No more and got up from the table. They went to cash out and everything went as it had before. Crockford's took his bank information and the pair expected a $12 million wire transfer to hit in the coming days. However, that wire transfer never came through. They decided they were not gonna pay Phil out and they accused them of cheating. Phil decided to do what all good poker players do and call their bluff, taking them to court. Around the same time, the Borgata decided to take Phil to court to get their money back that they already paid him, accusing him and Kelly of cheating as well. Both cases were ongoing at the same time. As for the Crockford's case, Phil lost the first, but he appealed going all the way to England Supreme Court, where he lost as well, never collecting a dollar of the $12 million he won. Well, for the Borgata case, it was a lot more difficult. They went after everything, trying to charge him with RICO and fraud charges that could have tripled his bill, causing him to owe more than he even won. Judge threw that out. What they did was not fraud, but the judge did rule that their little edge sorting scheme did amount to a violation of the New Jersey's Casino Control Act, so the Borgata would be owed its money back. Problem? Phil didn't have any money. All his winnings from poker, baccarat, and everything was moved into overseas accounts that they could not access. They kept fighting and they kept pushing. They were gonna get their money. Phil won a poker tournament and immediately his winnings were seized by Borgata. It seemed like this was never going to end and they were gonna go after his company to get their money one way or another. While that was happening, they also went after Gemico, the company who made the cards. Well, a judge decided that they could collect from the company $27, the cost of the cards it had purchased. So that was thrown out before court and they were not giving up going after Phil. However, they eventually settled. It's unknown what they settled for, but the case was settled. So his legal troubles are done and he did not get 20 million of his winning. But that's the story of how one man almost took down Vegas with some help from the Baccarat machine.